Hello once again, Deacon Harvey here on our 39th day of our Lenten journey, the fifth Saturday in Lent. Let us begin with our opening prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, you know me and you search me. You yourself know my resting and my rising, you discern my thoughts from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down, you know all my ways through and through. For it was you who formed my inmost being, knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you who wonderfully made me, how wonderful are your works, which my soul knows well. O search me, God, and know my heart. O test me and know my thoughts. See that my path is not wicked, and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, on our fifth Saturday in Lent, we continue to believe that you will live beyond your death is a radical challenge, but it is a challenge of freedom. To live that belief daily is to be free of the great lie, I'm not growing older. It's freedom from the grief of gray hair and wrinkles, whether at an early appearance in your 30s or their deepening in your 80s. Such a belief allows, allows you to enter the parade. To paraphrase Irving Berlin, put on your holy t-shirt with all the bones a dancing. You will be the grandest person in the Easter parade. Now that's a gift of faith. To believe that at this very moment you're in the Easter parade. The fifth Saturday in Lent or any day is a good time for the Easter parade down Fifth Avenue or down the street on which you live. At times the Easter parade also appears to be your own funeral procession since at the center of the Lenten labyrinth is not only the rose, but also the flesh-eating beast. Yet look again at the famous labyrinth of the Cathedral of Chart. Look at the rose in its center. That rose is like a rose window doorway, which through which you pass into a life that is filled with life. This life and life beyond this life. The author, Thomas More, the body is the soul presented in its richest and most expressive form. You and I, all of us, are the words of God made flesh. The spirit is enfleshed in us. Look then at your body, not as an image of death and decay. Look through the rose window doorway which allows you to see your body as a manifestation of your soul. In today's culture, soul doesn't often, en doesn't often enter into our consciousness about exercise or diet, not to mention our daily work and activities. It's more common for us to think about ourselves as machines. The purpose of life in today's society seems to, seems to be to keep the machine running as efficiently as possible and for as long as possible. Indeed, you and I need to be concerned about our food, our exercise, and our daily activities and pursuits. But whatever we eat or do, let it be done soulfully. The separation today of life and religion, of everyday life and soul times, would have been incomprehensible in the culture of Jesus. 
for Jesus and his contemporaries, soul, body, and mind were inseparable. Together they were a seamless reality. What divided them was Greek philosophy. Unfortunately, you and I live cursed by that split. One result is the human body being regarded like an automobile. Fast food places are just like gasoline stations. We feed the body as if we were filling the gas tank. It's ironic, if not symbolic, that most gasoline stations today also sell fast food. Fill your tank, fill your stomach in just one stop and just as fast. Is it possible to imagine taking two hours to fill your gasoline tank? You are not a machine, you have a soul. When you eat in a leisurely way, you feed the soul. If you exercise, do so in a way that involves both body and soul. Okay, a Saturday boot camp assignment is to make meals into times for soul food. A similar course in dying assignment would be to say body each time you say soul. And every time you say soul, say body. See them as twin words. One week from today is Holy Saturday. Practice then in the week that remains saying, Boy, does my back and soul hurt. What affects the soul usually afflicts the body. Create a new personal vocabulary of body-soul so that when you get to the center of the maze and see the beast, you can smile for you will see as well the rose of the resurrection. Recall the words of St. Paul to the Romans. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then the one who raised Christ from the dead will bring your mortal bodies to life also through the spirit dwelling within you. This is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 10 to 11. Once again, Romans chapter 8, verses 10 to 11. Until next time, God bless. And we close with our prayer from St. Faustina. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, eternal truth, our life, I call upon you, and I beg your mercy for poor sinners. O sweetest heart of my Lord, full of pity and unfathomable mercy, I plead with you for poor sinners. O most sacred heart, fount of mercy from which gush forth rays of inconceivable graces upon the entire human race, I beg of you light for poor sinners. O Jesus, be merciful of your own bitter passion and do not permit the loss of souls redeemed at so dear a price for, uh, of your most precious blood. O Jesus, when I consider the great price of your blood, I rejoice at its immensity, for one drop alone would have been enough for the salvation of all sinners. Although sin is an abyss of wickedness and ingratitude, the price paid for us can never be equaled. Therefore, let every soul trust in the passion of the Lord and place its hope in his mercy. God will not deny his mercy to anyone. Heaven and earth may change, but God's mercy will never be exhausted. Oh, what immense joy burns in my heart when I contemplate your incomprehensible goodness, O Jesus. 
I desire to bring all sinners to your feet, that they may glorify your mercy throughout endless ages. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until we meet again, God bless.